Adam Eaton, welcome to the RMB podcast. Uh, I'm calling this the RMB interview series. Um, since we're all quarantined, I figured we'd reach out to athletes around the area, see how they're doing, and maybe go into some uh, storytelling, going into some things that uh, I think a lot of people might be interested in. Um, a, we won the World Series with the Nats, which is amazing. Two, you're a huge hockey fan. Uh, three, that Nats at the Caps game was probably one of my most favorite <laughs> Capitals games of all time. So uh, those are all things I really want to get into. Uh, but first of all, how are you doing? How are you doing with your family? And, and how are you kind of handling quarantine life right now? No, I appreciate that. Um, quarantine life's a little different, you know, uh, um, just for the mere fact that we're pretty busy right about now. So my body's having a little trouble with, uh, you know, not being – you know, as active, you know, being around guys flying, traveling. Um, but, uh, you know, we're making the most of it. The interesting thing is all athletes go through is you're not home very often. So to kind of be home, I'm going to get some coffee in one second. Sorry. Yeah, sure. Thank no, you. Go ahead. Thank you. Um, to be home is, uh, kind of nice. You know, we're only home about two months out of the year. So to be home and, uh, you know, get stuff done around the house, you know, um, I mean, I moved in this house probably five years ago, and I, we literally were cleaning boxes out from the move this morning. Wow. So if it gives you an indication that, uh, you know, like I said, you don't get much done around the house and to be able to come home and, and uh, you know, have some downtime with the family and be able to do stuff around the house. I put a shed up. Um, I did, you know, different things that uh, you don't usually don't get to do because when I get home, it's November, December usually, and it's cold and snowy up here in Michigan. So I'm um, not being able to get outside very often. So like I said, being able to catch up on that's been nice. Family as well, you know. Um, my son is now four and my other uh, Mavericks ready to turn two. And, and uh, this is going to be kind of the tougher years I've heard for kids, especially with me being on the road all the time. So to be able to really spend some quality time with them, um, you know, Braden's starting to get that dead when dad goes on the road, he's not coming home for 10, you know, 14 days at a time. So uh, it's been very, very nice to be able to be home and, and enjoy them. So one of the things too, that, uh, so I have a three-year-old uh, and his name is Ethan and uh one of the things that I've kind of noticed is that I, I obviously I, I watch hockey. I do hockey. I play hockey all the time. And do your kids like love baseball as much as you like, how have they picked that up or haven't they at all? Cause my, my son yeah. loves trucks, which he calls truckins <laughs> and fire trucks. And I love it. I, he'll, he'll hold a hockey stick sometimes, but that's about it. Yeah, no. Um, I, I think, you know, Braden was at game six and seven in Houston last year. And uh, I think kids are kids at that age. And, and I mean, we went on the field afterwards, you know, uh, my mom, dad, my wife, and just Braden Maverick wasn't there just with travel. It's pretty, you know, as you probably will all wear, it's pretty hectic with, uh, you know, travel during the playoffs, but um, you know, dad did to stay in the same toe holes I did. And your mom was in the batter's box as we're, you know, walking off the field and Braden was literally just run the bases. Like he was in the backyard, like not, but it was cool for us, but for him, he's just, you know, just being a kid. So I think with that, um, he hasn't quite uh, got the grip on like baseball and, and, you know, dad plays in the big leagues, but he just sees, you know, dad's on TV and kind of a normal, a normal thing with it. But uh, he loves baseball, um, loves to hit Maverick, my two-year-old, like I said, almost two-year-old loves to hit and throw. But like you said, I mean, they're more into cars and Looney Tunes and all kinds of, you know, Paw Patrol and all that stuff. But um, like I said, um, you know, I'm not going to push them towards any sport. They love hockey as well. Um, you know, my brother-in-law played, uh, played at Michigan state. Now he's, um, I think he's owned by Calgary now. He was in the AHL, um, ECHL this year, kind of bouncing back and forth. And then uh, my uh, my wife's dad played some professional hockey. So um, you have that side of the family as well, too. So, um, like I said, they get a mixture of both. And like I said, they just love to be active. It doesn't matter if it's cars, trucks, uh, playing in sand, or, you know, playing hockey or baseball. That's amazing. Now, we were going to do this interview yesterday. I want, I want you to tell people what you ended up doing instead. <laughs> <laughs> I hope I don't get in trouble for this. I know uh, being in Northern Virginia, DC, Maryland area, it might not be frowned upon, but uh, I'm a big hunter. Um, you know, I love to, you know, deer hunt, um, duck hunt, uh, goose hunt, you know, squirrel hunt, whatever it may be. Just being outdoors, I absolutely love it. So something I've never been able to participate in is a turkey hunt. Uh, it's always usually April, middle April into May. And of course, we're pretty busy right about this time. It's kind of basically the same thing for hockey guys with deer hunting. You know, they're, they're, they're quite busy at that time. So not unable to do that. So, um, you know, I took full advantage of it, was able to um, 
I don't want to say kill, but to able to harvest a turkey yesterday. We were, again, we were supposed to have it. Um, ended up, you know, breaking the turkey down and smoking the turkey and then having it for dinner. So uh, it kind of, uh, I don't want to say it trumped, you know, uh, RMNB, but uh, it, it kind of did for a, a no, first it definitely, it, it definitely <laughs> does. It definitely does. I, I actually, so this is, I'm gonna, it's going to sound like a humble brag, but it's not. So when I wrote a Washington Post story on Dylan Bundy, so he grew up in Oklahoma. Sure. And uh, when I was talking to him when he was with the Frederick Keys, I live in Frederick, Maryland, which is about 40 miles sure. north of uh, D.C. Uh, he had actually brought a crossbow that day <laughs> to hunt mice and rats in the outfield. And so you gotta be, I was you gotta like, be, <laughs> well, you got to be pretty good to be able to hit him with that. But yeah, I've heard yeah. he's uh, he's I think he has his own brand of duck hunting uh, equipment, goose hunting equipment, um, blinds and stuff. So um you know, I think with all athletes, uh, you know, hockey players, like I said, try to keep the parallels with hockey and then baseball. you got to keep yourself occupied off the field. And uh, for us, again, when we finish baseball season, usually it's goose season, uh, duck season, and really deer season. I'm sure with, uh, like I said, hockey players, they're the big late guys, I'm sure. They keep their, you know, their, their uh, you know, their their lake life full uh, bloom like I said that's you know midsummer when they you know start up right after season but for us it's always been getting outside getting in the outdoors kind of getting away from civilization and uh, kind of relaxing a little bit so that's what you know we try to gravitate towards but like I said I know Bundy's a, a big hunter and, and uh, a pretty avid uh, duck guy. I mean that was that was pretty badass just to see a guy walking <laughs> out to his gigantic pickup truck with like, I don't, I don't know anything about cars. Like, I know a lot about NASCAR, but I don't know a lot about sure. cars in general like you. But his wheels are like 40 inches tall, um, and it had like lights that lit up the entire thing. I, and he had a crossbow. I was just like, this guy is so badass. I, yeah, like, the same thing with Davey. <laughs> Davey Martinez, the same thing. Yeah. Big hunter. He's got land in uh, uh, Nashville, Tennessee. Uh, right oh, outside wow. Nashville. Um, you know, Jan Gomes, our catcher, owns, uh, you know, outside Knoxville. So a lot of guys um, – like I said, love to get outdoors. You know, we're constantly with media. We're constantly kind of um, in the spotlight, so to speak. So to, again, um, kind of go back to your childhood memories, get outside and, yeah. uh, you know, try to be manly, I guess, you know, uh, <laughs> bow hunting, you know, using guns. And uh, like I said, try to enjoy nature as much as we can. Yeah, absolutely. Um, well, that's awesome. Now, one of the things that happened with the coronavirus pandemic is it kind of happened right when you guys ended towards the end of spring training, which is, which, I can't even imagine how much of a bummer that is, is that you ramp yourself up for spring training and then there's nothing. And then on yeah. top of that, you guys won the championship. Um, and then, you know, I know the banner raising was supposed to happen. You guys were supposed to get rings. There's so much to look forward to. Um, how have you kind of handled that? And uh, I know Mike Rizzo talked, I, I don't know if you heard this, but a few days ago he went on uh, MLB Sirius Radio and said that they are not going to raise the banner or give out rings until, um, fans can be back in the stadium because they want to celebrate with, with fans. Well I, well, I hope I'm around for that. I still have a team option next year. So I, I didn't think how the contracts work. <laughs> oh, <God>. <laughs> <laughs> well, but, hopefully uh, they fly you and Par out there if that doesn't happen. <laughs> that's true. But uh, no, I, I completely agree. Um, you know, we're nothing without our fans. Um, you know, it, it's, it's tough to think about baseball without any energy in the park, any buzz, anybody – um, you know, yelling at you that you hate you from an opposing team, uh, you know, or opposing fan or, you know, the, the roar of the crowd when people are rooting for you. Um, it's hard to fathom that. And like I said, I, I completely back him 110%. You know, we uh, – that banner's for our fans. That banner's for, you know, the DMV. That's, that area is so, uh, you know, enriched, of course, with the Nationals and the Caps. Uh, I think we both teams have done an unbelievable job trying to, you know, rival each other and try to push one another to be better. And those fans have, uh, you know, come along with it. So um, they deserve it, and uh, they deserve to see it in person uh, and have a chance to buy a ticket in order to see it. So, you know, I'm looking forward to that. But look back to your original question. Yeah, it's difficult. You know, you, you – we end we ended the season November 1 I got home by November 7th and then I was back working out November 14th wow. so I got about a week to 10 days off basically um, about a week at home with not doing anything which usually get about a month five weeks four weeks to five weeks to get off and when you only had uh, about a week to 10 days off you know, our trainers were like, you're going to hate us, but this is what we need to do. So to not take any time off at all and ramp right back up and then to, you know, put in that extra work, you know, you know, in the off season in order to be prepared. And then with, you know, two weeks left when really you're, 
you're starting to peak at this point to be shut down kind of yeah. sucks to be honest with you you know i'm sure the guys that you know didn't go to the world series they did the ramp up just like us but i feel like with going that long it is even more stress on our bodies so um with that being said it's kind of a positive now we can kind of draw back we can get max and those guys and strauss that had so many innings and corbin and uh Sanchi, you know get those guys that had so many innings to kind of take a step back and relax a little bit and and uh, I think it's it's benefiting us in some way, shape, or form to allow those guys to kind of have some extra time off. But of course, we want to be playing. But um, like I said, it's kind of tough. Like it's and uh, same thing with hockey. I mean, heck, yeah, you guys play an entire season, and you know, um, you're getting to the you know the nitty gritty when this is about time the caps really just go whoop straight up. Every year, there's always that you know we start off blazing hot, then we have the lulls in between, and then you know oh gets everybody in line, backstrom gets everyone in line, and we move and make a push to the playoffs but it was just about time the boys were going to start playing so that's that's got to be tough when the cats tried to defend their stanley cup uh in 2019 um they also ran out of gas so you're right it could actually end up being a benefit especially to the pitchers like how do you how do you what is one of the things that maybe so for instance for me is that i play hockey every sunday and you know I'm not an athlete at all. I, I you know I played in high school, but I'm, uh, I'm not an athlete. If you and, can skate, if you can skate, you're an athlete. Trust me. But, <laughs> if you can but, skate. <laughs> like, what happens? You know, so like I I'm I'm getting five pounds. My muscle is kind of turning into fat a little bit because I'm not playing as much. <laughs> like, what happens to a baseball player? Like, how are you kind of staying in shape? And like, do you have a batting cage at home? Like, how do you how do you kind of keep your timing? Yeah, that's uh, you don't. Um, I've always been a firm believer to separate family and what I do. Um, I just, it's just, you know, kind of ingrained with me. I mean, it's always been being from my father. You know, my father never brought, you know, he's a firefighter. You know, my mom was actually a waitress and when we were, in, you know, when we were younger, but it was always taught to me that you never bring work home and you never basically do work at home when you're around my, your children. So for me, I've never had, I don't have a cage. I don't have, I have, uh, you know, the, I don't know what you want to call them, but they're like interlocking. They're only go to 45 pounds downstairs. And that's literally all I have. So uh, for me, I love outside. Again, I, I love outside. I have a little bit of land, um, you know, just not too far from us in Michigan. And my workouts are cutting down trees, moving trees, um, working the land basically. Um, and, uh, you know, just trying to do any type of uh, athletic movements when I can. You know, I can't hit. Nothing's open right now. Can't um, get in the cage. Oh, There's no flips. No one can throw it to you. So it's like I said, uh, Michigan, we're really on lockdown. You know, uh, technically, if I would even go to that, I could be fined. Um, even my other, my other uh, property, they say um, it's illegal to go to as well. So, you know, wow. just kind of hang out at home and, uh, like I said, pick up the kids and do some squats with them when you wake up in the morning, <laughs> do some lunges with them, you know, uh, use them. As I know exactly hate. what you mean. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I know exactly and, what you mean. and they're wiggling, so it's a good core exercise. Um, but like I said, just like, I, I, you know, the more talks I've done about this is that people are getting super creative at this point on social media, which is really cool, but as well for us, you know, like I said, getting outside, doing different things making things harder than what they need to be. You pick up a log, usually you just carry it over your shoulder, but, you know, hold it out here, do some shoulder stability. I mean, serious. Do just yeah, that, that makes sense. And then, and then go and, do you know, do like a hit, you know, like I'm hitting, you know, good good for us. So, like I said, just trying to make things more difficult than it is. And, uh, and like I said, I think I'm working and I'm more active now than I would be during the season, which is pretty crazy. Wow, that's cool. I, I, I did see that one of the Orioles prospects threw a baseball across like an entire lake. I, I don't know. That's, that's all I've seen. But I get think. creative. Like, get creative. You have to. For me, uh, you know, throwing <laughs> is a different progression, so I'm not throwing right now. But like I said, yeah. pitchers especially, you got to keep your arm up, uh, you, know, uh, you know, up in that, uh, you know, where you can really just go again. Uh, as a position player, it's a little bit different. But, yeah, you got to get creative. You got to figure out ways to, uh, you know, kind of stay in that. I'm not hurting myself and not beating myself up, but I'm, you know, I can ramp up relatively easily. So, it's kind of kind of feeling that out uh, you know like I said the older guys are probably a little easier to do that young guys are kind of figuring it out at this point yeah so, we'll yeah I can imagine well I hope I hope obviously I hope for everybody's safety and I hope that the season start again safely I know the NHL is thinking about like having four different cities where people play and they do like triple headers a day and I, I I'm not as optimistic as maybe some yeah. that things will pick up especially having friends in the medical industry and and uh i think you know so but i hope 
whenever you guys get to celebrate your championship year, it's just going to be such a magical moment. And I think on top of that, because of the pandemic, people are going to be so excited to see you guys that it's going to sure. be one of those emotional things. I remember when 9-11 happened and uh, like the first hockey game, I, I mean, I was crying yeah. during the national anthem. Oh, yeah. I mean, it was, yeah. it was a very powerful moment. So, sure. um, so obviously we'll be thinking about that. Um, so we're going to, I want to go into uh, last season a little bit. Uh, but I also want to ask you, so one of, the, one of the ways that you got on my radar, and actually one of the ways that we started covering Nationals baseball and, and saw that we had a huge audience was uh, when we covered you wearing a Capitals hat during your injury rehab. And yeah. people really, really got excited about that. Uh, there's like a synergy between the two teams. But like, how did you first get into the Capitals? And how did you maybe, you know, you kind of talked a little bit about how you first got into hockey, but can you expand upon that? Yeah, so, um, you know, how I came in love with the Capitals. Um, I met Blaine Forsyth, actually, uh, his, which is the power play and uh, face-offs coach. Uh, his wife and my wife met at a park with the kids. And oh, wow. uh, that, was, that was kind of a, you know, a parallel. You know, I was already a Capitals fan at that point. But, um, you know, I played in some interesting cities with hockey. You know, I played in Phoenix. Um, the Coyotes loved them. You know, they were um, a very grindy team, but was, was, of course, very good, but easily likable players like Doan. Um, um, Mike Smith, you know, some guys that are pretty, mm -hmm. pretty good. And, uh, you know, then I went up to Chicago, you know, when I was in Chicago, they won a cup in Chicago. So it was like, um, I, I kind of just continued to build on my knowledge of hockey. Um, went to Miami of Ohio. Uh, we went to national championship in 09. It's a very sour, sour. I don't even want to talk about it because it makes me sick to my stomach. Um, versus Boston, you up three to one with three minutes and 23 seconds to go. And we end up losing in overtime. Oh, unfortunate no. uh, no, yeah so that's like i said a whole hey, different story but that's where the first love the, came some of the famous alumni there john walton mitch Corn. yeah sure yeah we have uh we have quite a few um ben roethlisberger we have wally zerbiak uh we have quite oh, wow. a few hockey players uh um you know wingles was with san jose when they uh you know were making some good pushes um we got like carter campers in the minor leagues ahl uh, Andy wow. andy mealy's in the ahl quite a few guys it's a good program um, you know, it was in the CCHA um, until I think a year or two after when the Big Ten actually expanded. But um, like I said, that's when the love really started. Uh, you know, I went, I grew up in Ohio, no money to be able to play hockey. Uh, I think I, I would have loved to have played hockey. I think, yeah, you know, my build, you know, um, I, I just love the tenacity, the intensity, the speed is just great. Um, but my mom and dad, the, the nearest sheet of ice was like an hour and a half away in Columbus. And uh, my mom and dad saw what the bill would have been for the first yeah. time. And there was just like, and like, it was one of those things where it's like, uh, no, it's too far away. No, it's too expensive. Like mom and dad basically were just trying to shield me from staying where, where we couldn't afford it. But like I said, I, I didn't know what hockey really was. You know, I saw ho hockey highlights on sports center, but then, like I said, went to Miami, Ohio, there were, you know, top 25 in the country seemingly every year. Uh, met my wife there, which again, you know, oh, had the, wow. the parallels with uh, her brother and her dad. And then, um, and then, like I said, being in some cool cities with some, you know, decent hockey, you know, kind of fall in love with it. And then, like I said, coming to the capital is so easy to be able to fall in love with a team like that. Blue collared, um, but absolute superstars all over the place. And like I said, then you, you meet Blaine and, you know, um, meet some of the boys that way. And then, uh, you know, when they won the cup, brought it to us. That was probably one of the cooler things. Um, you know, of course, Chicago, they brought the cup in, but, um, you, you have a genuine, um, genuine friendship with the team when they, when they brought that, they really wanted us, you could feel that they really wanted us like, we're, we're, we didn't win this for you guys, but you know, enjoy this, like, take a look at what we've won and what we have accomplished. We want you guys to do this. And, and, uh, I think that that friendship affair was very bonding. And I think for us helped us. Um, you know, seeing another team in the same area do that didn't make it any easier. Of course, you know, we're still playing the games, but uh, you see that you could accomplish something. When they brought the cup uh, to Nats Park, I that was one of the games I went to. I was credentialed on the field. I was standing right by the dugout. Now, obviously, someone who runs a blog is a fan of the team, and it's a little bit more emotional. Uh, and, I, I mean, I've been rooting for the team since I was like uh, – 12 it's like 1992 something like that mm -hmm. and I remember the roar of the crowd when they started <laughs> announcing Ovi and he brought it out I mean I think the excitement was you know one the Capitals won and I think there's a lot of overlap of fans between you guys but two it's just 
I think everybody felt like DC was cursed, you know? Sure. And, and yeah. when, that, when that monkey got off the back, it was such a jubilant feeling that um, I, like, I, I will never be able, be able to replicate. Just running around with my camera, taking photos of Ovi holding up the cup, kind of drunk. <laughs> Oh, geez, kind of. <laughs> <laughs> but what do you, so inside the dugout, like, I, I know you took a photo with the Stanley Cup, and I remember seeing that. Mm -hmm. What what was kind of that experience like for you? Just, um, like, do you remember any funny stories uh, from being there? Yeah, well, yeah, yes, and yeah, yeah. No, uh, it was my second time, again, seeing it in person. Of course, never touching it. I I don't, I don't know, I want to tell everyone, don't touch the did, cup, don't raise it. Did you the lift cup. it? Hey, wait, wait, did no, you lift heck, it? No, heck no, I don't. Yeah, I, I, again, I'm not saying no one else respects the people that have won it in their future winners, but I don't know. I, I just, like I said, I've kind of grew up in the hockey world at this point, and I know that I don't touch that thing. I definitely don't lift it up from over my head. I stay, you know, two to four inches away, you know, with my hand behind it and act like it's my friend. But besides that, you do not do that. Wait, wait. Okay. First of all, if you should have, because, no, <laughs> because no, 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 I, okay. I didn't take a picture with the cup when it was in the area until the Caps yeah. won it. But when the Caps won it, it is ours. And so you have <laughs> special, you have special rules because you're an athlete. Me, I was like, can I hold it to the uh, keeper of the cup, to Phil Pritchard? And he yeah. was like, absolutely not. You yeah, are, a, oh, you are uh, mingling. But, exactly. but I bet you could have gotten away with it. They would have been like, eh, sure, whatever. Well, what's, so. what's funny, Zim picked it up and the guy got oh, really? it. Yeah. Guy, what's his name again? He's, I was, it should have been Philip Pritchard. I saw him there. Yeah, he's in white gloves. He's got kind yeah. of uh, like what lighter hair um but yeah he was he was all over zim to put it down it's like you realize this guy is like dead near the mayor of the city here i mean <laughs> he does whatever he wants That's but, what I mean. uh, but uh yeah it was it was cool like i said he they came in put it in skip's office and everyone kind of made the rounds but like i said what i enjoyed was you you see the, all the guys from afar like oshi and holby and ovi and i mean i mean you list goes on all of them and they come up to you and for me just like I know them like just like another fan does you think you're personable like you know them as real people but they came up to me and was like hey what's up Adam like how we doing and I'm like you know my name like what are you <laughs> you like you know give you, you know come in here for the real thing and it's like it's hard for me to fathom that I'm even on the radar similar like similar said, feeling when you followed us on Instagram for me all right no so. come on. <laughs> but but like I said very very unique feeling like I said Holby comes up hey how's your family doing everybody's good and I'm like why do you even know my name like and you are asking me how my family's doing like this is pretty and maybe they're just hammered drunk and they looked at my name tag and was like, yeah come on in here like but it's possible like said, it's possible I can't say exactly <laughs> but like I said it was pretty cool to uh you know like I said for them to think of us you know, bring it and then really enjoy it. Sometimes you have guys that uh, you come in, they're like, not that they don't want to be there, but they're just like, you know, we have to be here type deal. And like I said, you could tell those boys were really enjoying it. And then I don't even remember who we were playing that day because, um, like I said, they were all, they smelled like a brewery the whole way out. We went out and took a picture. And then the whole game, it was just Ovi just raising the cup, like raising the cup every single time there was cheering going on. And I'm like, what's going on? They're just, I thought they were streaking. Somebody was streaking on the field because you're all of a sudden you hear this. Oh, no, nope, Ovi's raising the cup again. So um, what a day for them. And uh, like, were you, hearing, were you hearing it on the field, like those loud cheers? Oh, yeah. Heck yeah. yeah. And like I said, it was distracting. I don't even remember who we were playing because every time, it might have been every half inning they were raising it up and having a good old time. Like I said, as they as they should, they should enjoy it. And, I, and I remember it. I remember Dan Coco interviewed Ovi. Uh, I think it was Tom. Well, he was interviewing Ovi up in the suite level, and then Tom Wilson beside him just started randomly singing "We Are the Champions," and then like the whole suite started singing. And I was like, this, this is ridiculous. Awesome. No, I was at the game. I didn't see that until afterwards. And yeah. it was just, I, I, don't, I don't know. I, I, you know, I know you've mentioned that they know how to party. And oh, uh, yeah. I just, I just, you know, I, it's, I'm still it's speechless special. about that day too. It was. I, well, like you said, it's a long time coming. You know, the mm -hmm. city uh, doesn't think it's possible. Then all of a sudden you're like, you're almost watching a miracle happen. It's like, this is, this is it. Like, this is what it feels like to have waited and have earned a championship and, and to be able to enjoy it and basically be able to do whatever you want. And Hey buddy, do whatever you want for, uh, <laughs> say hi, Matt. Say hi. Any cameos by your family is okay, by the way. Yeah. Exactly. Like my, my so. son might run down naked. <laughs> I, I, I don't I have no idea. It's, it's, it's always something that I'm, I'm, I'm ready for emotionally. Mm -hmm. so. <laughs> but, uh, like I said, uh, like I said, to be able to see that emotion and be able to basically they could do whatever they wanted for about, two weeks um 
like I said, took full advantage of it and was awesome to watch. And like I said, it, it made us, you know, want to do it too. One second. Hey, Katie, can you kid him, please? Hey, hey bud, can you go see mom? Sorry about this. <laughs> no, no, that's great. Yeah. <laughs> this is the life of dads that no one knows. Is that exactly? No matter what you're doing, they'll show up. I was watching like uh, I, 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 I'm, I'm really, I don't want to admit this, but like I watched the like Chicago fire chicago pd shows on dvr oh, yeah. at like one or two a.m and <laughs> my son will some, sometimes just walk downstairs when he should be sleeping and like mm -hmm. scare the s out of me on the couch <laughs> and i'll be like where did you come from uh -huh. some and sometimes he's wearing pants sometimes he's not i like you have no idea what's gonna happen as no, boundaries. no boundaries no there's no boundaries, or no boundaries. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways um, back to it like i said it's, it was cool to be able to enjoy it with him and then like vice versa we were able to uh you know return the favor and um that was a that was a night for the books i don't want to get too hard far far ahead in your podcast yeah but, no uh, that was one for the books so like last year the world series run when did you know i i remember reading because i consume a lot of your guys' content like uh I remember dan steinberg was writing a lot about the team and um it just there, there was this really negative feeling the first month or two you guys were under 500 when did things change for you? Like when, when did, when did this belief happen or when did things change or that light go on? Because I'm, I'm going to use again, the Capitals as an example is the Capitals in 2018 during the regular season were not very good. Yeah. Like uh, if you look at advanced analytics, they struggled. Braden Holpe was benched the last two months. Philip Grubauer yeah. started at the beginning of the playoffs. Mm -hmm. This team yeah. was a little bit of a shambles, but then it just seems like a lot of times everything comes together. And a lot of times, you know, even when we, you guys did that zoom call, there's just this chemistry between all of you guys that is sure. just unbelievable. Yeah, no, and I think that is the key. Um, something that you say, Anna, like you say, um, the stat sheet, there's part of the stat sheet that no one, unless you're in the room, could feel. Uh, for us, when we started out, um, it was just, it's a long season. You know, it's 162 games, and when we started out, what was it, 19 and 31, I feel like everyone should, you know, get that printed on their forehead because of how much it's been thrown in our face. Yeah. Uh, 1931, 1931. But you look at the guys in the room, it's the same thing with, you know, with the caps, you, you got Max Scherzer, you got Kurt Suzuki, you got Ryan Zimmerman, you got Strasburg, you got Howie Kendrick, you know, those five guys, it doesn't, it doesn't matter what anybody else says. It doesn't matter what, you know, the noise out in the room it doesn't matter it, what those guys say and goes, you know, you have a, a good, uh, a good vocal, leadership group that leads by example you it, it keeps everybody up you know what i mean it, no one can falter no one could you could go a different direction um everyone's on the same plane and not no one's above the game no one's below the game you know rookie whatever superstar everyone's even and when everyone treats it as such that's why you have that like i said the long season that's why you have the bounce back in my opinion so we're 1931 you know there's no speeches being made. It's just basically everyone knows what to do. You follow, follow the leader. You follow your, your, the veterans in the clubhouse. And uh, like I said, you can't put your finger on it. But all of a sudden, you start winning some games, and you start pushing. You keep the grindstone. Um, it's hard to put a date on when we made the turnaround um, because I think it's everyone was focused. Everyone's just focused mm -hmm. on going 1-0 the next day, making a good pitch, you know, do, you know playing defense. And if you, may, if you struggle or you, you don't do something correctly, you, you bounce back because, again, that's what the veterans are going to do. So, um, like I said, what a special season. It's so cool in the way we did it. Um, even, even, you know, coming back and all the elimination games and whatnot. But um, one for the books for sure. But, again, I just – the guys in the room are who, who make it. And, uh, you know, Davey could come in and say something and – Davey is, is an unbelievable manager. I've really enjoyed him. But the voices in the room were really the older guys. And, like, these guys are going to really point, point us in, in the right direction. Mm -hmm. Who of the guys that, on your team that are just extreme characters, I would say, is uh, <laughs> Gerard Parra, Brian Dozier, who um, I, think, I think one thing is that, like, you know, the Nationals are still, you know, you guys have only been around about a decade or so. You guys mm -hmm. are still kind of a new team. And part of the championship run, which was amazing, was that, a lot of the personality of the team came out more and more kind of because sure. of those two guys and a few others. Absolutely. Um, and uh, can you kind of speak to maybe at first para and the whole baby shark phenomenon that happened? <laughs> um, I can tell you that the watch party, so I was on the field covering the watch party on game seven of the world series. And again, it's just like seeing 30,000, 20,000 people doing the, doing the baby shark chomp. 
so excited. Like, it, it, it gives you tingles. You know what I mean? It's just definitely different. Yeah, no, for sure. And I, I think, um, I think you need those personalities in the clubhouse, you know, going from, you know, first kind of couple questions, but like you need guys that are different guys that just kind of bring that, that relaxing makes everybody else feel a little bit uncomfortable to begin, bring that line, that even line, you know, Steven Strasburg, quietest guy in the world, goes about his business and most professional as possible, doesn't say boo to anybody. And you have Gerardo Parra and Anibal Sanchez dancing with him and like hugging him, making him feel so uncomfortable. But you see that man that's uncomfortable. He's touchable. You know, he's human. He becomes, like I said, he has a personality all of a sudden. He's, he's, uh, um, he's really funny. He's he is. really he is. funny. He is. He is. And like I said, but you, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta take the layers of the onion off in order to get to that. Uh, mm-hmm. Steven Strasburg but like I said you have those guys Dozier same thing can't keep his shirt on He's yeah a what's up with that <laughs> I can't go into it um there's a lot of a lot of things I'd get in a lot of trouble for with a lot of the guys okay. but uh he is he's we have a lot of things in which he um enjoys himself in the clubhouse in front of a lot of the guys and enjoys you know the camaraderie of that and like I said really brought again giving him vulnerability um, to allow everyone else to just, like I said, lo- like I said, just making everyone human, you know, in, in, mm-hmm. in big league clubhouses and probably hockey, there's a lot of egos. And when you can make everyone have a little more humility and just kind of loosen up and enjoy one another, um, you know, the losses don't extend too far and the wins keep going. So, um, like I said, uh, those characters, I think without them, we don't, we don't do what we need to do. And I, I give credit to Rizzo, you know, um, mm-hmm. I think we made our, I don't remember. It was April, May, you know, beginning of May, early June, or excuse me, late May, early June is when really when we started playing well and getting going. And then, you know, the the trade deadline, he could have blew it, blowing up. But then, he, like, he adds pieces. You know, he's bringing guys in. You know, he he helped with the bullpen. He brings in Harada Parra. What in like late May, early June there too. So, like I said, mm-hmm. you have those additions that Rizzo again didn't win um, GM of the years beyond me. Uh, but like I said, just not blowing up the team at that point and, and uh, holding true to what he believes is, is huge. He took a lot of gruff in the seasons before, uh, sure. you know, shutting Strasburg down early that one yeah. season. Mm-hmm. And I think the funny thing is, is that after he won the World Series, you look back at everything he's done and you're like, wow, he is he, a top he knows what he's tier. doing. <laughs> he is a why, – why did we ever criticize him? And I think, mm-hmm. I think that's what – you know, Brian McClellan too um, – yeah. You look at him and you're like, it's hard to imagine a better general manager of a hockey team. Really? Like, sure. he might have a mistake, but it's not his fault. It, like, on sure. paper, it was perfect. Yeah. Um, you know, so you guys, you guys make the playoffs, you get in, you start making some noise. Um, I, I don't even know where to start with the playoffs, but... Yeah. Um, I can help you out, but... Yeah, um, go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> the, well, the play-in game was unbelievable, you know, down three to one. Um yeah, three to one there in the ninth inning. The pinch hit for me was Zim, which is unbelievable. Zim, you know, gets a single there. Uh, you know, get a couple more guys on, and then uh, you know Soto getting that big hit was unbelievable. Gets in a rundown. No one. It's a, one of the weirdest plays I've ever been to. If somebody gets in a rundown and does like I'm invisible mode, which is what we always say is you run around the bases mm-hmm. and you get caught up. It's like you're not invisible. Like they, they there's a big league ball club, but everybody, whatever forty some thousand people in the stadium, they could not give a you know two you know what, that he just got thrown out a second. Everyone's going nuts. And actually, I think it was more beneficial for us because that Huddy was up now. Like, mm-hmm. he was already ready to go. The momentum was already going down. Like, if, if all of a sudden we have another batter and he strikes out, then it's kind of like, oh, okay, but we're, 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 here we go. It was like he was out, the crowd was going nuts, and, you know, two and a half minutes later, we were basically getting out number one. Um, what, a, what an absolute game. And then, uh, you know, going to L.A., Wait, wait. Now, I want to tell you, yeah. that game, I started believing. Now, do you know why I started You're believing? You're believing that? Now, I, I was that believing long? at that game. Just the, <laughs> just, just the playing game. Because if Guinea Kuznetsov was there, okay, now he's the guy who scored against Pittsburgh uh, in game six to finally get the Capitals past uh, Pittsburgh. And then they sure. won the Stanley Cup after that. He was at your guys' game. And he started doing the bird selling in the <laughs> I crowd. I don't yeah. Mm-hmm. And so I, I was like, this feels – this feels weird. <laughs> this feels right. I was like, right. I, I don't know. I like Kuzi was suspended. And that's, that's the only reason why he was there. Yeah. Uh, Cause I think they're on a West coast string. And uh, I, I just, I, I, I don't know. That oh, night felt weird. Yeah. And then go, I'll let you keep going. But no, I'm with you. I, I, 
I, I, I think the, honestly, the whole way through, I felt like there were every second or third game, there was a game where it just felt like this was, this we're kind of bound to do this. Like it's yeah. weird that we feel that way. LA is the same way. That was the best team we faced by far. Honestly, in my opinion, by far was the Dodgers. Um, no, 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 not, you know, slighting anybody else, but, and I think everyone would agree with me. They had a hundred and however many wins. They were an unbelievable team. The pitching was stupid good. Bueller is a, in my opinion, you know, top three at bats, toughest at bats I have had in my career. Wow. Period. Um, you know, he was unbelievable. You know, you got you have Kurt, yeah, like all those guys. Um, their whole staff was unbelievable, and then just their lineup just just thump all the way around. All you know, one through eight. Um, even off the bench, they had guys that could play. You know, starting in you know twenty five of the major league teams is unbelievable. Um, and then their bullpen was one of the best in the oh, big leagues as well. So it was just like. Um, to win that series with Howie in the 10th was – when we did that, honest to God, I, I, I'm not thinking this because I don't want to jinx anything. I'm very superstitious. I want to focus on today, focus mm -hmm. on now. But now looking back, when Howie hit that grand slam and we won, I'm like, we are going to win everything. Again, wow. now looking back. At the time, I did not think that. I'm like, okay, now on to St. Louis. Thank goodness St. Louis beat the Braves because I felt like the Braves had our number for the majority of the year. I don't know what the statistics were, but it just felt that way. But it, like I said, that beating the Dodgers was, man, not a sigh of relief, but it was one of those things where now I think that we are going on to the next, you know, I think we're going to be able to get to the World Series and, and have a good shot at this, to be honest with you. I, I believe in those moments. I think there are these yeah. moments that just you carry on with you. Again, yeah. like that koozie goal when, when the Caps beat Pittsburgh, he's like, well, the next two teams are going to be easy. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, yeah. it, it was just, it was. I'm glad you think that just, way, but <laughs> I don't think that, but. <laughs> but, but really, I really do. I really, I really, uh, I really do believe in momentum sometimes with sports oh, because, time, you know, like, time. you know, analytics, you can kind of predict the regular season, but in short series, I, I really believe momentum is, is a big part of it. I think um, on both games, I think both games, hockey, you might, of course, you know way more about hockey than I do with baseball, but um, those momentum shifts are everything. And the games are completely different in the playoffs than they are the regular season. Yeah. The intensity is different. The line changes are different. How they're stacking up the teams are different. For us in baseball, they, they, like the biggest thing that I took away from the playoffs was just the pitching. You see, literally you see three starters – You'll see like basically two starters win a five game series, and then you'll see two to three guys out of bullpen. You're seeing like six pitchers the entire for five game oh series, God. and everybody is throwing. Everyone is on cloud nine. Everyone is absolutely throwing fuzz and their best stuff ever. That was the biggest pushback that I had. But like I said, the game has just changed. And like I said, you get to run on first base, you have momentum. You have it's a rally almost. You get to run on first base in the regular season. It's not that you're all, you get a guy on first base. Like oh, whoop to do walk lead off walk. Who cares? You know. Oh, you got four in this inning. Who cares? We'll come back. In a four four run, you know, four run inning in the playoffs, you might as well just shut it down because the pitching. You know, like I said, everyone coming out of the pen's mm -hmm. gonna be unbelievable. With baseball, I, I do want to ask you this: Is that one thing I've always amazed about baseball players is how do you internalize the pressure? Meaning, you know, I would watch you batting someone else on the Nats, yeah. standing ovation from the crowd, or everybody screaming. How do you not get too excited? Because I don't, again, as an athlete, I, I would get very excited during these moments and I would play worse. And a lot of guys just, they play better. It's crazy to me. I would agree with that. I think um, the first, first two, well, okay. The, uh, the, the wild card game and the series in LA about the first three innings. I no, I'm not kidding at all. I could not, I could not grip the baseball because I, oh I was, God. my hands, I not, I'm not, that sounds crazy, but I feel like I was in panic mode. Especially, mm -hmm. especially versus Milwaukee, that first playoff game, um, that was, you know, baptism by fire. It's a one game playoff, um, you know, really good team growing in there. And like I said, I could not, I literally could not, I was throwing the outfield in between innings. And I'm like, I hope to God this ball doesn't hit to me because I have no idea where it's going right now because I'm so not scared. Your body's just going through something that. It's like fight or flight or some kind of really nervousness, is. right? Like, yeah. 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 Your, your body's just, you know in a different mode, but you don't feel that. You don't think that like I was calm, cool the whole day. I felt great. I was, you know, ready to play. I'm excited to play. And then all of a sudden you run out there and you have whatever chemical it's going through your body. It just changes you. And like I said, I just, 
and then as the as it progressed, you got to St. Louis. I mean, mm-hmm. it was almost like the first inning. That was the only feeling you had, where it was just like, and then you were so tired that it just you know just played throughout there. But then game, you know, game one of the World Series, I was taking pre workout. I mean, I had to get up wow. for those games. Wow! But the first the first little bit was. I mean, it was too much. You know, I, I had to, I'd almost come down. I was trying to, you know, almost depressed than I was to, you know, ramp up. But then, like I said, you got the World Series, and I'm literally taking what we call P4, which is like our, our get up, you know, and go. And I'm taking a <laughs> scoop of that before the game of the World Series because I'm like, I am so tired right now. I got to get going. <laughs> that, makes, that makes sense, though. Now, but, I do want to go back to NLCS really quick. Now, you know, you guys come you, – you win that uh, – during that series, Ovi threw out the first pitch. Yes, awesome. That from the field, what was that like? And and I, you guys won remarkably. And again, magic. This this team yeah. was magic. Uh, you guys won eight straight games after that, mm-hmm. which which I mean, feels he t- whatever he touches turns to gold. So yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I I didn't get as many hits as I'd like to after you know we shook hands, but I mean maybe next time, but. <laughs> But, uh, no, it was awesome for him to come out there, uh, you know. And, uh, you know, what's funny is usually the play, the guys that play don't ever catch the first pitch. It's just kind of the rules. Uh, Sean is the name that, you know, she, she does all that first pitch stuff. And, and uh, I think Howie heard her ask somebody else, like a pitcher, relief pitcher, like, hey, wow. OB's throwing out the first pitch. Would you like to catch it? And Howie's like, hey, no, ask Adam. Like, Adam's a Caps fan and, like, you're not going to ask him. And Sean's like, well, we don't ask starting guys. How he's like, I guarantee if you ask him, he will make time for Ovi to go out there. And what's funny is she came up and she was like, how he said to ask you, I don't want to ask you, but how he asked you, if you catch the first pitch for Ovi, I said, you know, F and right. I will like, absolutely. <laughs> this fires me up. She's like, I want to ruin your routine. I said, no, the routine's out. Like I'm going to go catch the first pitch for Ovi. This fires me up. So uh, pretty cool that, like I said, he was able to come out and, crowd uh, responded well to him and uh, like I said uh, in turn you know we, we kind of took off from there too as well yeah absolutely and I think that was that was a series where you guys invented when did when, okay wait a second I think when did you guys first come up with the clutch celebration was it earlier than that that was you know what's funny is that uh, Howie and I Howie was hitting decently well I was not hitting all that well power wise and uh, I think like the first week of June we went on a uh, him and I are you know big car guys and uh, mm-hmm. We went to a Porsche experience in Atlanta. Um, that was, I think it was, wow. no, no exaggeration, I think it was a day or two before we turned it all around. And, uh, I, you know, everyone does their dancing and all that, you know, hoopla. And I'm like, well, I have no moves, Howie. I was like, we need to figure out something that we can do together, you know, in order to, you know, get boys fired up. He's like, well, we love to drive. Why don't we just, you know, go to the end of the bench, just, you know, rip through a couple gears and that'd be fun. And no exaggeration, when we did that. I think I went from like two homers in two months to I think I had like 10 in the next, you know, two and a half months or something like that. And how we took off as well. So it was just funny how something so crazy, you know, so, you know, minute kind of, uh, you know, now is evolved into, you know, the national phenomenon bottle. now. Yeah. Well, yeah, we have I our mean, own bo- one second. We have our own bottle yes. head now. Yes. We need, we need, we need to show this off. So, yeah, we got, I got all I got all the boys over there, but we got this, which is us driving. But uh, <laughs> I have I have this. Yeah, there big, it fan, is. big fan of this guy. Big yeah, fan of this guy. Yeah. Oh, wait. Oh, oh. I was gonna say I was gonna say Funko does <laughs> Funko does an unbelievable job. They do. Quality, they do. And like they're so and they're and they're quality. Like they're they're sturdy. Like they're I not even paying us. It. They're not. Yeah, they're not even paying us to do this. We just really no. like the bobbleheads. <laughs> they do. Uh, like I said, an unbelievable job. I have. Uh, they sent me Max and Soto and Strauss and and uh, like I said, I have all the boys uh, up in my uh, up in my thing. But like I said, pretty cool that. No, if, I mean not crazy, but Howie is. He is such an outstanding human being, and just for me to be on the same bench on the on a bobblehead with him is like is over the moon for me. Like I said, I, I have the highest respect for this guy and he's he's one of the greatest human beings I've ever met so like I said if you have him on a bobblehead I'll cherish this forever and uh, like I said it, it it evolved into something that was pretty crazy and like I said now we have a bobblehead of it and uh something that for the rest of my life I'll cherish it's pretty cool and this this one isn't isn't half bad either too. my <laughs> son cool. my son really <laughs> loves this one I was gonna say <laughs> par, oh uh-huh. par it's, it's uh thing. Yeah, for people to say, oh, it's a Gerardo Parra bobblehead where yeah. he has a baby shark bandana over his head and 
a baby oh. shark is coming out of the the ocean with a World Series Nationals baseball, which is amazing. I'm surprised they didn't send me that one. I'm upset, man. Oh, we're we'll figure that out, man. We'll figure that out. All right, this is this is important stuff we need to be talking about right now. So, <laughs> so, the, so then you guys uh, clinch your first berth. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Your chance. You guys celebrating, uh, winning the NLCS. I, I was I was amazed by how you guys turned the trophy into a drinking device. That was. <laughs> Incredible. Oh, the fault the caps. <laughs> yeah, now this is where you start seeing the caps, Nats, hockey celebration. I know you talked about too during the series how the team motivated you guys and sure. uh, they, they were kind of pulling for you. And how, how, yeah. did, how did that happen? Is that just one of those random things where you guys were just like, oh, let's do it? Or, you know, did you guys talk about like how you're going to celebrate? Or I are don't know. If are, that's... You t- are you talking about um, what, what the, are you talking about? It's the I forget what it's called. I actually wrote it down because I always forget. It is the you're, the Warren C. Giles Trophy. So you're saying uh, when we beat uh, St. Louis, or are you talking about the Dodgers? I'm sorry. The NLCS, right? Okay, or, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. So I mean, not really. We don't. I mean, I feel <laughs> like this. I, we. I mean, we're all spur of the moment. We. You never. I don't know why. I never thought I would ever even hold any trophy. I don't think I'd ever, you know, even be in the big leagues or doing that stuff. So it's all spur of the moment. But like I said, I think the Cavs, again, kind of set that precedent just to enjoy that time. Um, We don't have anything as cool as Lord Stanley. Uh, I've said, been on the record many times before. I think that's the coolest trophy in all of sports, Um, you know, where you can literally eat cereal out of and put babies in it and argue with it and hold it over. But like I said, we, we just try to get creative with it and whatever we can do with any of the trophies, Um, you know, anytime time you can pour beer down it and try to drink out of anything, I think it's pretty cool. When, uh, do you remember anything from the celebration then that you found like particularly funny looking back? I mean, Sean Doolittle getting his Star Wars groove on. I think he brought lightsabers. I mean, that, I, I just, yeah. I mean, no. It's like everybody had a personality of their Prop. own when they celebrated. <laughs> I, didn't Trey Turner have like the gigantic like ski glasses? Um, he's, just, he's got the, uh, yeah, he's from NC State. So he had like a ha- football helmet on, then he had a rugby <laughs> helmet on. Um, Max had two different color eyes. Uh, his, uh, um, you know, his shields, but then like I said, yeah, uh, Doolittle has his lightsaber. Like I said, everyone kind of had their own little prop. Um, I don't really remember much from it, to be honest with you. I think it was just uh, really just what was that feel- what was the feel? Yeah, what was the feeling inside the, inside the yeah, locker I mean, room after you guys won? It's, it's, it's not that it's bittersweet, but it's one of those things where, okay, this is really cool. We could, you know, we, this is part of the check it off, you know, check off the box. Um, it's almost like getting a hit, you know. If you get out, you're upset. But if you get a hit, you're checking the box. Now we move mm-hmm. on to the next one. It was the same thing for that. It was like, we need to enjoy this, have some fun, you know. Uh, but we're checking the box and we're going to move on to the next round. And, you know, who, who we're going to prepare for next. So it was mm-hmm. one of those things where, guys, I didn't go all out, um, you know, drinking. And I think a lot of guys didn't. You know, you're spraying, you're having a few drinks. But it's not like, this is not the final. This is not the finish line. This is just mm-hmm. a stepping stone on to the next one. So I think, like I said, a lot of guys enjoy themselves, spray some champagne. I may have had two drinks. And then, like I said, we need to prepare for the next round. So I think, like I said, I think guys uh, uh, enjoyed themselves. But, you know, the eye on the prize type mentality. Yeah, absolutely. Then you go into the World Series. You're facing off against a perennial power in Houston. Um, you know, looking back now – with the, you know, I, I know everybody's kind of going on the record about the cheating scandal and stuff like that. Looking back now, do you see any moments where you look back and go, hmm, or, or anything like that? Well, we knew, well, yeah, we knew about it. Um, but go into that. Go into that. Yeah. Like, Oh, I don't know how much I want to go into it. Sure, <laughs> sure. Yeah, I, don't, I, I don't particularly want to make too much news with that part, but, but just no. as a fan, I'm interested. Um, yeah, we, we knew about it uh, fairly early. Um, not just that year, but, um, you know, security things have been changed. Things have been moved around, you know, where we're, we knew there was something going on and they were, um, like I said, I don't want to go too far into it. Like I said, I don't know what has been said and what hasn't been said. I try to yeah. stay off media as much as I can for the most part. But, um, like I said, we knew about it. <clears throat> we knew what the, you know, what was going on. And, uh, so we made adjustments on it. We were already ahead of it. Um, as most teams were, especially in 19. So going into it, we weren't, um, we weren't really afraid of it because we knew how to, uh, 
um, you know, compound, I guess, not compound, but, you know, we knew what to do. We knew how to switch signs up. We knew basically that um, there was some sort of relay system that we, uh, like I said, wanted to try to get ahead of and uh, was an issue for us. So, and that's nothing different than anywhere else. You get, you get yeah. to some places, you get some guys that are on second base. There's, you know, it's not, the, it's nothing crazy. It's not like we had, you know, a 30 minute meeting on how we're going to compound this. It's basically like, let's just switch up our signs. Let's keep things moving. Um, if you see guys that are on some stuff, let's switch it up. Let's do different sequences and, uh, you know, go from there. So it wasn't anything crazy, but um, you know, what I thought was huge uh, going into the world series was our time off. A lot of people mm -hmm. thought it was going to hinder us. But having an older – we're the oldest team in the big leagues. I think having the oldest team in the big leagues, I think it was huge. Um, you know, I think maybe having a little younger team, you have to take some time off. Some guys may not uh, use that time as, a, as efficiently as we did. I thought that uh, all of our pitchers really needed it. A lot of innings, a lot of hard innings going down the stretch. And uh, to get the – I don't really know what it was, five to seven days that we had off, I think was huge. Uh, you know, how he's – I mean, you name it on our roster besides the two guys in the outfielder in Trey um, are older. So to have some time off, you know, um, and pick up right where we left off, I think was huge. And then taking the first two games at their place, I think was big as well. So um, I think besides everything throughout the whole playoffs was picture perfect, except that we did not win a game at home <laughs> for the World Series. I know that sounds crazy. That was but weird. I think, yeah, that was. Yeah, I think as a reason, honestly, I think I never, I never really buy into like nervous or tr expectations or trying to, um, trying to win for like a group of people but when we came home that's all we were thinking about was like we're home we these people want us to win so badly let's give it to them and mm -hmm. i think that just it went against us i think it was um um we were more nervous than we were on the road when we were on the road we were like it was a simple group we're on the in the hotel we go to the stadium we play when we're at home it was just a lot of not a hoopla but you, you know you're it's like, oh, we have arrived. You know, you're pulling into the stadium. There's, you know, 150 people out there, 200 people out there. And it's like, you know, it's just a different feel. But when we went on the road, it was just a different, um, you know, mentality, uh, you know, kind of road warriors. And I think that the combination of all the craziness and uh, wanting to win for our fans so badly, I think is the reason we didn't win one at home. But uh, it, it worked out all right. <laughs> what do you remember from the first game at home, like uh, of the World Series? I, I know there was so yeah. much anticipation and excitement. I think that was exactly right. You know, national anthem, just being introduced in front of all the home fans, um, you know, being up two games, kind of having a little bit of, um, you know, not that we run it or any stretch by that, you know, by that uh, sort, but just that we felt confident, you know, we're coming home, we're, you know, we're going to give the people what they want and that's a win. And, uh, you know, we knew Houston was a really good team and that, you know, back of our mind that they're going to push back eventually just, you know, when is it going to happen? And, and, uh, you know, we found out in three games that um, they were going to go quietly. Yeah. Um, I know during the series, too, uh, Juan Soto, uh, I mean, everything from, from um, to God, his crotch grabs <laughs> to, his, to his, I guess I his lunges. It. I call him the lunges. <laughs> but uh, uh, that kid, how good is that kid? He's awesome. He is a terrific human being on top of that. That's what I love about him. He's um, – he's going to be extremely special for a long time. You see a lot of people that are talented, but don't have quite um, the humility. And which is funny because when he gets in a box, it just, there's something that just turns where he doesn't have humility anymore. He just wants to just <laughs> yeah. rip the pitcher, rip the pitcher's face off, but he's just a really good, really good teammate. He's a good person. He respects the older guys. He fall, he not falls in line, but he's uh, just one of the guys. He doesn't try to separate himself. He doesn't try to big league anybody. He just, he's himself. And, um, it works out really well. Robles falls right in line with that same exact type of talent, but he's uh, both those players are going to be really good for a very long time. And uh, I think DC is, uh, you know, lucky to have him. to be honest with you. Very lucky to have him. I, I was uh, blown away by just how many big hits, uh, big homers uh, that Howie Kendrick had. I know you've already spoken about him, but mm -hmm. you know, it seems like he's, he's, towards the tail end of his career and he's probably hit no he's at the he's at the that's end the of most locked, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's the most locked in he's ever been though almost uh -huh. uh, like it just like every time he came up it was either a homer or a double just cranking yeah. the extra base hits um so so you guys go down you're, you're in game seven uh you know for all the marbles uh you get uh 
an amazing pitching performance from Max Scherzer who comes back. Mm -hmm. I, I consider that a hockey performance where, <laughs> you know, the guy was hurt, comes back, has an amazing, amazing outing. Um, you, uh, I know you hit a home run in game six, and then you hit a double to give uh, the Nats breathing room in game seven. What, what was, was that a, like was for you? It was a single with the bases loaded in uh, game seven. But oh, sorry. No, you're what, fine. It's fine. Did, did you but, imagine that as a kid, like Game no. Seven World Series? No. You're the one coming through. You got a bobblehead made of you now. I mean, no. I mean, I mean what is that like? It's. Uh, I'm just you know, surreal, to be honest with you. I think, um, yeah, never my wildest dreams. I mean, even going Division One baseball, like my my whole goal when I was a kid was to make my fresh make high school baseball as a freshman. Like that was it. Um, just make the team um, expectations were never over the moon um, and I don't know if that was just because of how I was raised I don't know if that was just how my parents what instilled in me was like you know they never told me you're gonna play in the big leagues one day it was more of um, let's just go step by step you know try to be the best here try to be the best here be the best that you can so um, you know of course you're in the you know the backyard you have game winning world series I was more, I was probably Kenny Lofton you know in the night mid 90s oh, yeah. was huge for the Indians so I was a big Kenny Lofton fan I was Kenny in the backyard but um no never my wildest dreams would I ever be in the world series I mean really in the big leagues be in the world series <laughs> hit two homers in the world series you know hit um you know a single in game seven to really push it like never my wildest dreams like I said I live in an absolute fantasy land so to do it is um uh, like I said, beyond beyond any of my, my, you know, what my mind would ever have thought of, you know, 10, 15 years ago. Yeah, so how do you, how do you get to the last couple of outs? Uh, I know from the Zoom call, I learned that Jan Gomes kept the, the baseball. <laughs> I don't, how, do, how do the guys feel about that, too? Because I know um, they I love Brooks, it. Brooks Orpik has, yeah. I believe, the Capitals uh, winning Stanley Cup. Pop. Yeah. No, I, for, for me, you, you hate to see – I, not that ownership or the organization, they, they get a lot of the stuff they get, you know, which as they should, you know, it's, it's big, mm -hmm. it's big for them. It's, you know, it's, um, um, you know, at the end of the day, they run things, you know, they're, they're, they're paying all of us, but it's pretty cool for one of the players to be able to have a piece of team history. Um, mm -hmm. I think it's awesome. I hope Jan keeps that in a really safe place. Um, I hope he, I, I told him to cut it up in 25 pieces and just give it to all of us. Um, you know, it's, it's priceless to him. So why don't not share it with the rest of us? But uh, like I said, I think it's pretty neat that he was able to hide that ball away and, and uh, be able to take it home. Uh, yeah. That's, that's, him. that's tough. Then you guys yeah. celebrate. What, what were your feelings kind of running off the field? Um, and, and when that happened, you, you know, uh, they, they showed a video of me and, and uh, you know, certain thoughts ran through my mind when we got two outs because the whole way through you're so funneled your so mind is so just ramped up on the next day the next picture how are we going to get another win how are we going to do this how are we going to bounce back it's never the big picture it's never like I'm going to I'm in the world series it's never that thought it was it's just always so narrow-minded so <clears throat> game seven when I got the hit that was the first time I was able to really let emotion out where it's like we are going to like we're going to win this thing like that is the first time I was able to just like you know um, have some excitement like I said then two outs in the ninth inning I'm like I'm still not thinking like or definitely gonna win this it's just it's you're sitting there like this is this is pretty cool what am I gonna do um, you know <laughs> I I don't know what I'm gonna do I've never thought about this before in my life like yeah I had no plan and uh, so I blacked out I literally blacked out when the when the last thing I guess I put my glove on my head and I was running and I don't I don't know remember that at all I honestly don't remember that at all I just knew that I wanted to celebrate with Robles and Soto, uh, mm. you know, amongst everybody else. But those two guys have came so far, um, you know, uh, they call me uh, Papa or, uh, or Grandfather. <laughs> Those are my two nicknames for me just because, you know, every step of the way, every struggle that any of us have had, we, uh, we've done it together as a group with the three of us. Um, and they're 21 well, they were 20 and 21 at the time. Now they're 21, 22 or 23. Yeah. Well, one of the two, but they're very young guys. And uh, like I said, to be able to celebrate with them at such a young age and like, you know, when spring training to see them grow throughout the year and they make a bonehead play one day and then the next day they'd make the, the exact same play and they make it right. And they're like, Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. But that's, you see, you see those guys literally grow, uh, you know, go along. It's so fun to be able to do that. So like I said, when that, 
when the World Series and we won, I'm like, man, I just want to hug these guys because it's amazing how far we've come and how young they are and how much I respect them. So to be able to, you know, like I said, hug those guys were the first guys I hugged. Um, was basically all that was on my mind. Now, in, inside the locker room, you guys celebrate. Again, you try to drink out of the World Series trophy. Yep. <laughs> uh, I, amazing. I don't like kind of just sliding well. it in a little bit. <laughs> uh, Doolittle called it a, what, a piece of tin or a piece of metal. Yeah. Um, so, you know, everybody saw the celebrations and things like that. Um, you come home. What happens for you guys after you come home and, and after? Because, you know, with, with the Capitals, for instance, I think they went to a Tiesto concert in Vegas. <laughs> they were just drinking all night long. I remember they flew home at like 1 p.m. the next day, which was delayed by like six hours. I, I just the whole thing was a sloppy mess for them. Yes. Yeah, where it feels like you guys are a little <laughs> bit more professional about it. Uh, maybe yeah, I don't, I don't know. know yeah. I don't know if professional is the right word, but maybe you're setting precedent. That's that's yeah. not professional. Now. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you, you know what's interesting is I I it's no, no one's fault or anything, but I feel like we were one of the more subdued um, teams to ever win. Usually when you have that team, you have the people going on, you know, uh, the tonight show and going on, you know, in the morning shows. And, and it just seemed like that never happened. You know, people just kind of went off to their own hometowns and, yeah, and, uh, and that was, and then even in spring training, you know, the, you know, Houston thing all happened. I think we had like three reporters open, you know, the first day, four reporters like four cameras or whatever. Uh, like I said, I think just it's crazy because I, th- I feel like, me and, you know, being in D.C. is kind of the mecca of politics, but maybe that was a reason why we weren't so highly regarded media-wise throughout the nation. Um, like I said, we – we not many guys got, uh, you know, kind of that pub- publicist, you know, type uh, push. But, you know, I came home. It was funny is that we drank for – what was it, four straight days? my body (laughs) my body started to fight back at the end of that fourth day and uh you know you come home and i'm thinking to myself finally i can get i can go to sleep and i can you know get my you know eight hours of sleep but i came home and i just kept drinking because all the people at my house just coming over everyone's coming over drinking and we're we're in the basement having a good time it's like i drank for another week after i got home and i'm like people (laughs) leave me alone i you know give me give me a reprieve right now let me give me a couple days and we can go party later but um, no, it's awesome. You know, um, so many people have a hand in everyone's career, you know, it's not just you that go through that. So, um, you know, to be able to share it with my mom and dad, you know, people that are, you know, closest to me and, and, to, you know, contact and talking to a lot of the, you know, folks from home, um, pretty, pretty cool to be able to share it with them. And, uh, like I said, need to be able to have some, uh, you know, fond memories and a few drinks with them and enjoy it and have some stories. Does the MLB send you guys uh, anything to commemorate it? Like, I know the the NHL sends many Stanley Cups that are, like, this big for any award that anybody wins. And I guess a follow-up question to that, too, would be – this sounds really funny, but, like, do players, like, maybe see, like, memorabilia from the World Series that they're selling? Like, do you keep anything? Like, how does that work? Um, Well, we don't get anything from Major League Baseball. Um just um you know we out of pocket you buy uh i have like a replica full-size replica and it's actually just a random guy that contacted one of our bp throwers that we went through um so we did that and then um the memorabilia part we there's a select few of us that got memorabilia deals afterwards so Mm, you sign a bunch of fanatics yeah exactly right fanatics Mm -hmm. and we signed a bunch of different things different items for them um and then uh they actually fanatics to thank us sent us one like plaque um, with basically what was it? Maybe like 12 to 15 of the guys signatures, oh, which is pretty awesome. cool. But besides that, I mean, I got my shoes. Um, I only wore two pairs of home and away during the world series. Uh, my bat. Um, I never got my home run ball back. Neither one of my home run balls. I never got back. Okay. We're putting a uh, signal. We're putting a signal out for that. You would like one please, of your home run yeah. balls. <laughs> I, let me know what, what you need. I, I have, I have two baseballs from the world series. One was a ball to me. Um, yeah. but, uh, besides that, um, uh, like I said, uh, I isn't that funny? Much- isn't that, isn't that funny that it's like the biggest moment of your career and it's hard to get stuff. I don't. It, I know what the Stanley it, Cup stuff they sold it too, and it's it's just hard cra- to get your hands on it's it. It's crazy. Um, yeah, you'd think 
one second. I need the charger, so I'm going to text my wife. Hopefully, she. Oh, sure. It. <laughs> um, but uh, it's it's amazing to me that you would think that guys would. Braden, no, get out, please go. We got we got naked kids running throughout the house again. <laughs> see, just see, like see we're what talking I mean? about. Um, and um, hey, can I get the charger for the computer, please? It's fiasco around here. No, that's okay. It's okay. It's, yeah, but uh, anyways, no, yeah, you'd think that, yeah, this is the biggest moment in our career, biggest moment in our life, and you would think that um, you would get something like, hey, here's here's some dirt from Houston. I mean, I, something like, hey, here's a, you know, here's something that you can I mean, take along I mean, with I mean, I can, I can actually forever. send this to you if you want. How'd you get, look at that. How in the world? <laughs> they sold it, they sold it for like, I, I think a month on MLB.com and I grabbed yeah. I'm serious. I'm serious. If you give me your address, I will send it. <laughs> no. But seriously, no, you, seriously. You need that. I got, no, I have two. You can have, I don't have, you can have that I don't, one. I don't, I, just, I don't have anything in here, but I might have some on my spikes from uh, <laughs> up in the games. But uh, like I said, pretty, uh, yeah, pretty crazy that uh, you don't get much. I think we got a jersey. Um, but like I said, nothing really from the game, unfortunately. Yeah. But thank you. Um, but like I said, Nonetheless, I lived it, and uh, yeah, that's the coolest part, obviously. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the so, only part that really matters. Uh, yeah, but uh, like I said, pretty, pretty cool that you got some dirt, though. No, I'll send that to you. Seriously, <laughs> no, you don't. You. Have, you don't have to. But that's uh, um, you got some. You got some lit the ice from the. Oh, I have that as well. Yes, I have that as well. Jeez, I'm, I I'm, a, I'm, I'm a collector. Honestly, I, I don't know if you can see it in the back. But uh, actually, I, I told you about this on DM. Let me move my chair. So oh, yeah, this is, is my this is the hood from the Arm and B car. That's about as best I can do. That right is now. sweet. From from the Dover race where Ryan. So the whole story about that was I. Uh, so we sponsored Ryan Ellis, who's one of our uh, readers, who's a Washington Capitals fan, grew up in Asheville, Virginia, and he ended up getting into NASCAR. And so uh, we raised over ten thousand dollars with our readers through a, through a hockey tournament to get him into the race. So we got to be the first sponsor. And he said uh, with the hood that uh, I couldn't have it because the team needed it. The team was very poor. And it was yeah. like, the only way you can have it is if I accidentally crash. And <laughs> Ryan, Ryan was nice enough to get a concussion that day at Dover. Oh, no. so, I could, so I could have his, the, yeah. the shattered hood. Uh, but it's, what if your uh, rumor's giving it to you? <laughs> <laughs> I kind of feel guilty you about it. You said. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> Actually, I was going to leave this for the end, but I wanted to tell you this now. I, now, you, Ryan saw that you left a comment on our Instagram about iRacing. Okay. First, my first question for you is, do you iRace? I do not. I've been, I've been trying to acquire a simulator. Okay, okay, okay. okay. I'm finding out they're really, really expensive. So a little bit. <laughs> well, here, two... If you don't have a simulator, Ryan will help you get one. And I like that. Uh, if you get it in time... Uh, Ryan would like you to race on his Friday night races with other NASCAR drivers. And he I wanted me that. to invite you. Oh, and that was geez, kind of our thank you for myself. doing this. <laughs> you oh, might, I'm, but, but you'll, always sure. you'll always remember it. You'll always remember it. Ryan's been racing awesome. under our car and he got uh, in like this Italy racetrack and uh -huh. he got flipped into the trees. <laughs> so so like, he sent me a screenshot of my car in the trees. <laughs> Hey, that's good like, publicity. Yeah, I was like, hey, all right, that's, that's really stupid. I love it. I don't, like, he's having fun, though, and I, I really admired uh, how, you know, with, like, hockey tried to get by the coronavirus uh, pandemic by doing simulations, and it was cool, but it's yeah, computer oh, yeah. generated. When you actually see the NASCAR drivers literally in their own, like, stalls driving in these, like, trifold, uh -huh. like, screens, it's, it, you know, it's, it's actually, it, it, has a, it has a feeling of a real race. Sure. Those simulators are impressive. You know, mm -hmm. I've done quite a bit of research on them and i um, Michael Taylor and I went to do some simulating stuff in New York. It's wow. amazing what they can do with virtual reality and those simulators and the vibrations and, you know, the car, the, the uh, wheel correcting and kind of feeling the rear end of the car come out like the oversteer and the understeer. It's amazing what they can do with those uh, simulators. So, um, and, and it seems like a lot of the race car drivers now to learn um like 
um, excuse me, to learn like the environment. So like before mm-hmm. they go yes. onto a track, you know, they're going to put the type of day that they're going to be racing in. This is what it is. This is what time of day it is. And then, you know, do some testing with it. It's pretty, I, pretty remarkable what they can do. I've, I've asked about it. And a lot of the guys say that, that it's something that they do on a Tuesday, a Wednesday, yeah. just to, just to re, you know, re familiarize themselves with the turns and, Crazy. and when to break and when to come on the throttle and stuff like that. And uh, unbelievable. yeah, so we're going to, we're going to work to get you one and get out there once. Come on. I, I can't make any promises and, and you let got me you lease and it for, to talk. Let me lease it for a week and then I'll <laughs> send it back. That's awesome. Well, I appreciate there are ways, it. That's awesome. Ab- absolutely. No, we, well, we're really appreciative for your support. And oh, I, I think for you. Ryan too, having a world series champion in a race uh, would give Ooh. them some more cred too. And I think NASCAR, NASCAR, NASCAR is a sport. I grew up on it. Uh, hilariously enough. Uh, my family always loved it. And it was really popular back in the day with Dale Earnhardt, Rusty Wallace, and Mark, oh, yeah. Matt, Dale uh, Jarrett. Mark Dale Jarrett was my man. Dale Jarrett, that, and he was owned by Joe Gibbs, so a lot of people loved him uh, in this area. And it just kind of fell off, like the the popularity of the sport has really fallen off. And I think they're starting to realize that iRacing can kind of be, and video games are kind of their vehicle. It, sure. so to speak to get back into it and so uh, yeah. i think you would be doing them a huge solid too but i will i will get yeah. you guys in in uh talking about that Love so it. back before we got uh <laughs> sidetracked by racing which i told you would happen um so you guys have the parade uh i remember it was a cold day i was there too uh, what was that experience like for you just to see that many people come out in dc and just be losing their mind with you guys very cool. Um, yeah, they started out, uh, you know, families, of course, are all there, which is pretty, pretty special for us to be able to experience that with our families. Um, I did a burnout, which is pretty cool. I was able to do that. I, I'm just sitting there, you know, had a couple of drinks, not too many at that time, which hope I don't get anybody in trouble, but uh, not that many. But um, I see there's a ZL1, which is the, you know, bigger horsepower Camaro, and then an SS Camaro. And I was like, you know what, I'm going to go down there and just see if they'll let me do a burnout on constitutional. So I'm like, I, I go down there. I'm like, Hey, can I do a burnout? And they're like, absolutely. And I'm like, I can't believe they're gonna let me do a burnout right now on a public street with all these people around. I was like, this is, un- this is unbelievable. This is so dangerous, but you're gonna let me do this. I'm fired up. So I, you know, I lay into it. I, you know, I'm, I'm up there on the limiter and uh, I don't hit the limit because you know, that's, you know, I'm guilty of that, but, um, and I'm, I just keep going, keep going. I'm like, you let me know when I have to stop. <laughs> and I bet you, you know, it was like 10 to 15 seconds, a good burnout. I bet you, I bet you there's a dent still there. It has to be. I mean, I was in the pavement. I wasn't moving and uh, felt the whole thing full of smoke. And what's funny is I was getting about 10 text messages from all the teammates. We're like, Where, where's all this? It smells like tires back here. Are you doing a burnout? Like they all knew it was me, which is ironically enough. And uh, like I said, what a cool experience to be able to do that. And then, just seeing all the people, uh, you know, when, uh, you know, you're, I don't know how far we went, but however many blocks you went, but as you got close to the stage, you, you just see a red. I mean, there's red everywhere. Mm-hmm. Even on the buildings, you see like, uh, or stair steps to buildings, like every bit of the stairs are all covered up. Then the top, you see like, you know, kid, you know, people have kids on their shoulders. It's just see a red everywhere. You, you know, it's as far as you can see, there's no, there's no concrete or pavement. I mean, there's all these people. So, uh, so awesome to be able to, like I said, have a few beers, enjoy it with those people. And then, uh, you know, you have a ceremony where all of us are pretty well, you know, done in and just trying to enjoy it. You know, we open up the hotline for the ceremony. Yeah. That was amazing. That we do, we, we do that quite a bit, um, you know, on the bus and, uh, plane flights and whatnot, just to, uh, uh, you know, to be able to enjoy it with uh, the guys. So like I said, to be able to do that, and, um, have everyone, you know, say hi to bring Tony Rendon back and, uh, you know, have Skip up there. Now, like at said, that point, at that point, what did you guys know? Because usually About there's Anthony? some, yeah, so usually there's some kind of inkling that it's it's probably going to happen or not. There, you know what's interesting is there was two places I thought he would go, one including DC, and he didn't go to either one of them. And mm-hmm. I, Tony and I are relatively close. Um, you know, uh, not one conversation had where he went to Anaheim, which is interesting to me. Great for him. Great for his family. Happy for him. You know, I, I think he's one of the, you know, the, one of the greater human beings I've ever met as well. Really down to earth, really relaxed, great family. Um, and like I said, you know, more power to him to go uh, and try to, you know, enjoy California, but very surprising to a lot of us um, to say the least, but uh, you know, that's Tony though. Tony, keep you guessing. So like I said, love him for it, but uh, you know, good luck to him. Excited for him. 
um, you know, and uh, like I said, worked hard for it. As a media person, I, I enjoyed that because obviously it's up to him. He's earned the right to, to play wherever he wants. You know, he had an amazing year, um, you know, deserved every dollar that he got. Um, but it's also like, you know, usually people don't talk about it. You know, you, people shy away sure. from it. And I thought, you know, I went to art school, like, like you guys kind of pull, pulled back the curtain a little bit to be like, we mm -hmm. really want you back, you know, and, and we it, really love you as a yeah. teammate. And I thought that was really cool. Yeah, no, and we did, and we did. We wanted him back and uh, wanted him as a teammate. But again, he, um, you can't, like you said, you can't blame him. You, you, yeah, you know, absolutely. Whatever not. you think's best for your family, and uh, like that's what we've been keeping it at, and that's it's so true. You know, because if if the roles are reversed, I'm never going to be as good as Tony. But if roles are reversed, and uh, you know, you leave and you think this is the best decision for your family, it's the best decision for your family. It's just, mm -hmm. um, it's all in the eye of the beholder. But like I said. Um, credit to him that, you know, every single one of us just really enjoyed our time with him and wanted him back. And um, like I said, kind of, um, you know, all part of the business. I'll share, I'll share a story with you that um, I think is a parallel for Rendon kind of the opposite way is that I remember Devante Smith Pelly resigned with the Capitals to help defend yeah. the cup uh, last year. And by the end of the, he had a, I think it was a multi-year contract that he left on the table to sign a one-year deal with the Caps and by the end of the season, he's in the minors. And yeah. it's just one of those things where Crazy. you're just like, it's like if you, if you think with your heart sometimes, you know, this is your one chance. Mm -hmm. And if, if you do that, it, it's, it's something that, 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 you know. Anyways, that's a not fun No, topic. yeah, well, I mean, <laughs> even if you go, like, uh, if you're watching the Bulls. Um, but Scotty you know, Pippen, right? Exactly. Yeah. It's tough. I mean, it's, it's so – this is a, such a bad area for me to go into – um, but it's just, it's just tough. You know, when you're not, when you're not in those shoes, it's hard to have an opinion on the matter, especially yeah. when it comes to it. It's just very difficult. To, um, when you're, when you're underpaid, but you're still making millions of dollars, it's hard, but yeah, you know, you've worked, I don't know, like I said, it's hard, it's hard Avenue for me to go into, but no, so I know, like I, I know where you can't, where, the, yeah, there's no, tough. there's, there's no way where you can say something right, but I just exactly. want you to know, and I was just putting that out there for Tony. Is yes. that, you know, yeah. it's just, it's just one of those Stuff. things where, where you have to do the right thing for your family. Um, for sure. For so, sure. so we, we get out of the parade. That was really fun. And, and this is, this is the, the, the finale of our conversation <laughs> here. Uh, my, one of my favorite capital games of all time, you guys went to capital one arena to celebrate your championship, just like the caps did at Nats park. And I, I want every detail of this. Like, how did, how did that even happen? Like, when did you hear? Like, how did you guys get there? Was it on? Because I remember the Caps came on, on like a party bus yeah. to, to Nats Park. Like, was yeah. it similar with you guys? Similar. Like, how did that go? Similar. So we, yeah, we came with um, this. Honestly, that was the best night for me. It was, I, uh, I love yeah. the, I love the parade, but this was way, it was better than the parade. And the reason it was better than the parade was because, and there's no offense to any of the families, but it was the last time that we could have everybody together, just the boys, mm -hmm. just the boys. It was just all, there was the roster. There was no wives, no kids, no nothing. It was just the boys. Let's go. We're going to go to the game. We're going to take a bus. Let's drink. We have no, no problem getting home. No, nothing. Just, just enjoy the night. We took a bus over. Um, we came underneath Zim, um, you know, read the card. Um, so I went underneath, you know, see Blaine, see some of the guys, and uh, I did the Oshi Chug. Yeah, uh, no, wait, 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 wait. How? Okay, so like, I, I know a few people that have tried it. I'm not saying if I have, but uh, that is a very hard thing to do, I, I hear. Uh, it is. How, how does one do the Oshi Chug? I mean, was there well, practice involved? Like, I don't, I don't even know. There's no I, I would have all involved. the alcohol just coming down the shirt, you know, if I, if I tried it. It's all a shirt. I did, the hockey jersey did not go well because it's very thick. And that I feel like with, you know, how hockey guys sweat and, the you know, it's, you're trying to keep everything in, the smell, the sweat, the everything with the hockey jersey. It's tough. They're very thick. But I think it all dictates on what uh, shirt you're wearing. But just get some good flow going and, uh, you know, just let it eat, I guess. This is my, my only tidbits. But um, that was cool. A breathable shirt, like, yeah. Exactly. Breathable <laughs> shirt, yeah. Um, That's what we learned today basketball basketball shirt's probably the best one but uh, right, anyways okay. um like i said zim read the card uh you know uh they had a we gave him a helmet uh yeah probably th th two weeks to a month I, i'm gonna test, test. Game. 
I'm going to test test them on this. Is that all of you guys signed it? And I swear, by the end of the year, it just smudges everywhere. And, and the, oh, and the memorabilia it's collector in me is like screaming internally, that's like the, this is a piece cool of part. history. No, that's <laughs> like, the cool part. Okay, okay. That's the cool. That's hey, that's just adding to it. I think that's. I think honestly, I think that makes it even cooler that these, you're not, now you have the fingerprints all these the guys on your on the, on the helmet. But that's cool. I think I think Warren Warren piece of history is pretty cool. Yeah. But they uh, they they donated. Um, they donated the helmet on the West Coast. There was like a fam. I forget. You might. Not, I don't know if you know the story. I don't know the story, but I do yeah. broadly know of it. That happened like in Los Angeles or something. I think it was something I, I West know. Coast. Something to yeah. a hospital or something. They raffled it off or gave it to charity or whatever it was. So when we came back, we of course brought him another helmet, signed it all, and uh, you know Zim came in, read the card. They didn't really expect him to wear a helmet, but it was cool to be able to come in, see him again, and uh, you know, get kind of give them what they want with you, the uh, the ocean. You got jugs, the boys. So. You got you guys. You got the boys going. <laughs> I right, try. I, I, gotta, I gotta say, is that that set the tone for that night? Like it, it, it really. They did. played well. They played well. Yeah, they did. They did. I, you guys yeah. enjoyed it too. I, so so that night, uh, first I know Verona scores the hat trick. But first yeah, pregame, yeah. pregame, pregame, pregame. Yeah. You guys all go oh, out in the, the ice. You take a Ooh. well. <laughs> you guys take the photo together out in the ice. I don't so even cool. know what to ask here. What what is going on? Yeah. What is being said? What what are you feeling? So was that the first time you've been at ice level with a crowd like that? Yes, it was the first time I've been uh, ice level. Um, you of course you know how big the guys are, but when they put skates and everything on, uh, Ovi is like, I mean that man, he is a like uh, like again, you know R M N B. I mean he is a mountain of a man. Like he yeah. is huge, and when he has his skates on, and he has his pads on, and he just comes over. And I was blessed enough to stay, you know, sit right next, stand or go on a knee right next to him. And he like held on to me, like, cause he was fired up that we were out there. He like, I mean, like, I'm like, don't break me, man. Like, you know, he's, he's like, you know, strong, you know, strong arm and man. Um, but just to be out there, you see Wilson, how big he is on the ice yeah, too. It's right. like, why would you ever want to mess with any of these guys is beyond me. It just shows you how, you know, I love hockey, but how crazy some of these guys are and just the, the intensity that, you know, you're skating at 25 mile an hour, all of a sudden a break fights out, you know, you know, and these guys are just huge. It's just, it's just amazing how these guys can collide with other guys and whatnot, but just being on the ice, the lights, you know, um, and then those guys, like I said, kind of embracing us, taking a picture with it. And, uh, like I said, fired us up. Um, you know, I think everybody left the ice just like chattering about it. You know what I mean? When you yeah. like, that was a really cool experience that was like we're all like wide-eyed like that was that was we, we cool had we had no idea what the plan was for that yeah. by the way so that was a complete yeah. surprise and, yeah. and i loved how like you got backstrom and they got ovi and zimmerman together two of probably the greatest you know yeah. dc players ever sure. sitting right beside each other it was such an iconic moment that i think like in the lexicon of dc sports they're gonna be playing that again and again you know i agree with that when i have way more gray hair than i do now <laughs> and and so you guys go up you get the suite i'll say it was a, it started a little timid but it, it picked did. up considerably later in the night um uh, I, I i don't i'm trying to remember some of the Jeez. things that happened oh, but, me too um, <laughs> there was a lot of dance. yeah there was a lot of there's a lot of dancing um i'm trying to see if i can find some of this stuff um well, yeah, as the game progressed, you know, um, you know, like I said, the we started drinking, having a good time. Then all of a sudden, guys started pouring beers over the on the suites. Like fans were coming up and saying, "Like pour some beer in my mouth." So funny, again, funny enough, the, we started pouring <laughs> beer in these people's mouths, and the lady that was kind of like our chaperone that was in charge of us was like, "No, you can't do that," <laughs> and we're like no we can like and we're going to and we just like the people just kept li literally they're lining up until like i think security kind of shut that down uh, but uh um, then you were uh, yeah go ahead no go ahead yeah, no yeah what were you saying? no you're fine i i, so, I don't i guess it's all coming back to me but you go ahead there, there was dancing in the suite um there was yeah. the drinking like that then you go down uh i think it was sec i don't remember what period you go down verona scores a hat trick while you have the world series trophy and they were about to bring you back on the ice again and so i remember this actually became one of our most read stories of the year last year at a meeting was you started taking the hats after they cleaned them up oh, and started geez. throwing them back on the ice which was an amazing yep. moment <laughs> but well, while you're holding the world series trophy it's so surreal you know? So, yeah. So what the interesting thing is, is that, um, so I know Verona has two goals. 
and we go underneath to get on the Zamboni. So we're, we're all going underneath. It's a, uh, you know, you, you might know better than I do. It's pretty mazy in there. You, yeah, you think is. you know where you are, but you really don't know where you are. So I'm going all of a sudden, I hear the horn and I just happen to have the World Series trophy. I'm trying to carry it as much as I can. I have, I have the World Series trophy and I hear the horn. I'm like, no way. It, it, let's see if he scored. And I'm like, I run. I'm running with the World Series trophy and I get to wherever it was. And what was funny, it was at the end. I don't know who was a goaltender at the time. But he was at the end, and I'm like, oh, sweet. So I'm like run up there, and I think I was shooting I was shooting him with the World Series trophy, and then I threw my hat on there. I don't know where my hat went. And then people start throwing hats to me, so I'm throwing their hats on there. They're, 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 like, they're sweeping hats to me. I'm still throwing it out there. I'm trying to hit him with it. I'm like, I, don't, like I said, I, I was blacked out. About so that, that was, yeah, well, <laughs> that was an unplanned moment, wasn't it? That, oh, so big, that was unplanned. Like I said, I heard the horn, and – um. I'm thinking like, hey, this, this could be a hat trick. I'm like, I'm gonna go check this thing out because it is. I don't even. I don't even know what hat I had on, but it's gone. Like, this is. I've, I've waited for this moment my whole life. Wow. And like I said, I went out there and funny security security <laughs> took me away too because I I was like everyone was fired up and I'm turning around. I'm I'm loving this moment right here. And security's like, all right, oh Adam, come God. on, come on. You got the the zamp. They're, you know they're gonna close yeah. up. Let's go. Let's go. I remember. So, yeah, wow. I remember this moment from you. You're doing like the, you're mowing them down. You're mowing them <laughs> down like you're Dave Bautista in your WWD <laughs> in, WWE intro. All right. So oh, so then you go you go back. So okay. So that that's amazing. Didn't yeah. know that. So, so right you go back. Period. You find the boy. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. second intermission. But now I'm gonna give you some context. Yeah. Uh, Evgeny Kuznetsov does uh, an interview during the second intermission, and he says uh, he heard you hear some like screaming in the background, which is obviously you guys going just wilding out. And he looks at you guys and kind of smiles, and he says something along the lines of, you know, uh, you know, these guys are really tame. You know, I wouldn't have remembered anything. Uh, I don't. He's like, I don't remember anything from the Nats Park night. And so, uh, so then uh, NBC Sports Washington shows the Zamboni going out, and you guys are all clothed. Um, now, something happened in the Zoom meeting, which is context, which is new to me. So Ryan, Zim what happened with Ryan Zimmerman? Uh, so he so, was on the six of yeah. you were on one Zamboni. Go, go ahead. So, so actually, before we went in Zamboni, I I will credit myself for getting the idea to go in the Zamboni. So the chaperone, the same lady that told us that he couldn't pour beer in everyone's mouth. <laughs> She, I went up to her. I said, we got to get on the Zamboni period. Like, I don't care what it takes for getting on the Zamboni. And she's like, no, there's already people that are in line. They, they literally, they get, you know, months in advance for these things. Like they either have paid for it or they're, you know, this, this, and this. I'm like, I don't care. Like get us on the Zamboni. This is our day. Like this happens like once. And I'm like 1930. I probably said the wrong date. I'm like, it's been a long time. We're going. So we went down there and funny enough, there's, was there six seats? Uh, on the one Zamboni and then there's a single and she goes down there and like you know uh, goes with the people that are driving Zamboni and and uh, she's like they want on the Zamboni and the guy's like hey these people already did you know they have their thing you can ask them to see what they say but I have no promise you're gonna get on I'm like we're getting on like let's go so the funny thing is the guy the six guys that I think they're like some corporate uh, – maybe they sponsored something. I don't I know They're giant food or something. Yeah, giant food yeah. or something. So I was like, hey, do you mind if we take, you know, the Zamboni? They're like, absolutely, take it. Like, I was like, let's get a picture. And they got they each got an individual picture, and then we got a group picture with, you know, whatever, the six Oh, of yeah, that's a great trade. That's a great trade. I yeah. would have done that trade so, in a minute. Me too. Like, if I'm, you know, I'm, you know, I'm a hockey fan, baseball fan. If the, if the Stanley Cup came by and I'm like, you know, Ovi – I'm not Ovi, but, you know, some players yeah. came up – yeah, heck yeah, go on the Zamboni ride. I can do that any day of the week. Let's do this right now. So then Zim had the, the, the uh, you know, the, it's got to go up to this girl. I think she was like, I don't know how old she was. She wasn't very old, 10, maybe, <laughs> 8, 10, 12 years old, maybe 12. And he had went up to her and was like, excuse me, like, do you mind if I take your Zamboni ride? She's like, well, it's my birthday. <laughs> and, and I think Zim went to the fact, well, we won this trophy over here and we should take it out. And I think like her parents were down there and they, like you said, they did the same exact trade, but they're, I think they were more reluctant than the guys in corporate, but so funny. And then, like I said, uh, we hop yeah, on the so Zamboni. Just, yep. Yeah. We hop on the Zamboni and uh, we're fired up, man. We're like, yeah, this is gonna be awesome. I can't wait. Let's get like, let's give them a show. And uh, <laughs> Jan Gomes was like, you know what we should do? 
is we should take our shirts off like Dozier and we should like, you know, fire them up and, you know, do what we need to do, hold the trophy. And the Zamboni driver heard it. And he's like, no, no, you can't do that. If you do anything like that, I got to come right back in and we cannot have that out there. And Jan's like, well, how many times around do you go? He's like, I go three. He's like, I was like, well, as you make that second to the third turn, you got to go all the way down to come back. You can't like, cut across, right? And he's like, yep. And he's like, all right, cool. He's like, that's what we're doing, boys. When we, we make that, that second turn, you should see on the, I don't know the video. I don't remember, but it must have been right around or maybe right as we went around, we did it and we had a full turn. But, yep, we, like I said, took our shirts off. I don't know why. Again, probably just Dozier, just trying to be like Dozier. And, uh, like yeah, I let's said, see, it was you, it was, it was you holding Form. the trophy. Yeah, Jan, yeah. Sean Doolittle, Trey Turner, Trey. Max Scherzer. I, I don't know who the other person was. Uh, but and then I remember, yeah, Zem Zem stayed clothed. He's, he's yes. he has his hands out. He was dead. Um, he was dead. He, <laughs> he, he, he wasn't allowed. He was he get in trouble. The man yeah, he, 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 he was he was your angry father looking at yeah. you like <laughs> he didn't want to, yeah, he didn't want the dad bod to be out there anyway. <laughs> they clothed, but he's uh, like I said, I remember us looking at him. He was like, What in the world are you guys doing? We're like, hey. That, that apparently you can do whatever you want when you win the world series. So we're going to, we're going to take full advantage of it. And like I said, we came back underneath. Um, and just, like I said, I think everyone either was like, what are they doing? Or was like, absolutely loving it. We went back underneath. This is a crazy story, but or the connection of the story we underneath, we got on this off the Zamboni and we were carry. I'm again, I don't know why I'm always carrying the trophy, uh, but I'm carrying the trophy and I see the room where the, uh, the refs are. So I'm like, oh, no. oh, we're going in there for sure. We're going in there. We go in there and we get a picture with all the referees. And what, uh, really? It, yeah. Okay, wait, wait, wait. you have to send me some of the photos from that night. I, I'll, please, send, I'll please. send you one. I'll send you one. I, I, yeah. Which this is how this. I got this photo. I didn't even get this photo. Funny enough, but I was in spring training this spring. This spring training, I was there. I ran into it, uh, an NHL referee. Crazy story. You know, one of his. Um, I don't know. You wouldn't call them line mates. What would you call a referee that's on the? Uh, oh, it's team. the officials in the line. line whatever. Yeah, whatever. Official line or whatever. Yeah. Um, that's with him. He was on this group picture, so he actually sent the picture of all of us. You just were wasted in this picture, <laughs> but I actually got the picture from the referee. So I'm in with the referees now, which is good. I'm going to start. Oh wow! Some money to them, just you know, when they play us. But um, yeah. So funny enough, I got that picture. Then we went to the cheer, the cheerleading ice scraping girl room. We yeah. got pictures with them. Um, like I said, basically, basically everyone we ran into, we're like, let's take a picture with them. And so, <laughs> uh, um, the, yeah, uh, I mean, yeah, I want, I, I, I want whatever you got because I, it, yeah. I think it's just Here, one I'll, of those. I'll, let me see if I can look it up. You can keep talking. I'll, yeah, yeah, uh, sure. I, I should have it. But, it might take uh, like ten hours to scroll to go back. Like that's that's my camera. <laughs> photos but, of sun, uh, photos of sun. Yeah, my cats, photo of sun. Uh, uh, so then, uh, so like, so I was covering this. And so from my general experience, you know, this is the type of stuff that we cover. You know, we cover the things that people really enjoy and love. And, sure. um, you know, everybody was just so excited for you guys. And then seeing that much joy, you know, Capitals fans connected how the Capitals partied. And then when they saw you guys going at it like that, I mean, there was just this pure joy that everyone shared that was just so awesome. Like, I think hockey, you know, I think the hockey fans were like, you know, we really rubbed up, on, rubbed off on this team. You know what I mean? Like we really Absolutely. influenced this team to really let go because Absolutely. it was pretty buttoned up before that. Um, and so, you know, I was writing and I was like, oh, well, that, that's as crazy as tonight was going to get. Nope. Nope. So you guys end up in the locker room. And uh, well, was, before, before that, okay, go ahead, please. Before that. Yeah. So we started taking around of the sweets just because I don't, I don't know why, but we started taking around the sweets. Um, Brandon Brown is actually another uh, NASCAR driver. He's in the Xfinity yeah. Series uh, on, on Saturdays usually. And uh, he also does the iRacing stuff too. Um, but he's a uh, Northern Virginia guy. So he, oh. happened to, he actually happened to be there. And uh, we went in the suite with him and let his family hold the trophy. And so Brandon got to, you know, get some pictures of the trophy. Follow him on Instagram too, good friend. But uh, he uh, – so we ran into him. Um, we ran into – it's so blurry but we ran into I'm a sure. lot of people that are kind of influential in dc and i can't remember any of them but it was crazy did you, we see, ted? Did you see ted no 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 ted 
Uh, but like I said, we went around just knocking on every all the sweet doors and just basically just hand them the trophy. Come take a picture with us. Come on, let's go. Basically, but that was kind of – I feel like, again, that's kind of the Stanley Cup. And yeah. For mm-hmm. us, I feel like just you, the fans and everyone give so much to us, we want to give it back. So even if it's these random people, you're supporting the Capitals, which means you're supporting us. Let's have a let's have a moment where you can, you know, for me again, if I was in that position too, it'd be last a lifetime. Like, hey, I got to take a picture with Stanley Cup, or I got this picture with the Commissioner's Trophy. But um, <laughs> you know, it's so sad. But um, like I said, when I was uh, when I was at Nats Park, by the way, this this may be something you don't know is that uh, so I went upstairs outside the suite just to see. You know, they weren't letting media or anything back there. But, like, I was just like, let's just go up there at the end of the game and see what happens. Mm-hmm. And Alex Ovechkin actually, you know, completely gone. And yeah. he uh, he walked over to the crowd. And, you know, like, there's a separation between athletes and fans, always. You know, sure. you know, it's, it, there always has to be a little bit of a healthy separation. because You know, and Ovi just goes through the security and does a just big bear hug <laughs> of like 40 fans. Like he just does Love this it. to the yeah. whole fans. And <laughs> I, I was just like, this is just such a special time. And I think that's what you're, what, what you're talking about is this camaraderie, this celebration where it's it just, it's just yeah. such a special moment. You want to share it with other people because they got you there too, you know? Exactly, exactly right. And I, I think it takes some, not time, but once you once you win it i think people the the uh the athletes kind of realize that like hey we're all in this together and uh it's also a time that they can't complain so i think that also puts us in a good mood it's like you can't complain we want it all all right let's go you, you can't say that you didn't like me you know in june or uh, oh my god <laughs> Do like little. i said everybody's kind of uh everybody's kind of feeling good uh, but yeah it was fun um but yeah it's funny how i got back through that but yeah we went underneath and then like uh you know like i was saying but uh, we went down underneath and uh you know we did did you hear about uh we did our pre um uh, like our our after game uh ritual with them ovechkin got involved just pretty cool that you know no we didn't hear that no, no. okay yeah so we went underneath um after the game they let us all in you know after media um they had no media in the room no nothing it was just us and the boys which was awesome like I said, we did our, our kind of our ritual after the game. Uh, Ovechkin and some of the guys got involved, which was pretty cool. Uh, that's why I'll leave it at that. Um, it was a lot of fun. And then they had the day off the next day. And, of course, yeah. we had nothing. So, we, you know, had a couple of drinks. Um, you know, me and Zim um, – well, I went back in the coach's room because, you know, I know the coaches fairly well. So, I was like, you know, I'm going to back to the coach's room. It, that was probably after maybe an hour or so drinking with them, you know, talking with the guys. And so went there and kind of, you know, was shooting the, you know what, and Zim was in there, Davey was in there and Rizzo, which is pretty cool. I'm definitely the fly on the wall for sure. You got, you know, cool, really awesome coaching staff for the Caps. And then you have Rizzo, the GM, Davey, the manager, and then the mayor of basically of, uh, you know, DC and then there. And I was like, I said, the guy that was, you know, the guy in the corner was being quiet. But it was neat to be able to talk with those guys. A lot of great, you know, minds uh, in the DC area and really just in, in sports, um, you know, um, in there, like I said, be able to, uh, you know, listen in. And then all of a sudden I hear, we hear a knock on the, do- on the door and Dozier is at the door and he says, Hey, they're letting us out on the ice. Let's go on the ice. And I was, we were like, what? And they're like, yeah, they're giving us all sticks. We're going on the ice. And I was like, well, heck yeah. I'm never going to say no to that. So I'm no exaggeration. I think it was one, one, two in the morning. We're out there stick handling with all the guys. Um, you know, Dozier was no- shirtless. Dozier yes. Was shirtless. Uh, he always is um but uh yeah we're out there like i said throwing pucks and shooting pucks there's no you know nets or anything like that and we have no skates but we're sliding around out there on with skates and pucks and just having a good old time and then i think like i said i think we left the arena you know i don't remember but i bet you it was past two. Oh wow uh, um so like i said just really cool to shut the place down with the guys have a couple of drinks and then uh you know i got a ride home with uh, Blaine, which is like I said, it's a power play assistant coach. Uh, That's awesome. Coach. So yeah, can I got right home. He took me home. So <laughs> can I ask you something about Blaine? Um, whenever they interview him or whenever he talks, <laughs> he's always like this. Blah, 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 blah. Oh, that yeah. was the straight, literally the straight line emoji face. <laughs> it, does he have, in personal life? Is he a little bit more animated or he, he can get animated? Not really though. Uh, <laughs> okay, okay. So really. we're seeing the real Blaine. Yeah, All right. it, it's real Blaine. I, I, you know what's funny? So he got fired up. I think they had an overtime winner. Maybe uh, I don't remember what it was, but I sent it to his wife. I said, 
look at this emotion. I've never seen this type of emotion. He like, he like clapped his hands and did like a little like fist pump and then it was back <laughs> to normal. But uh, you know, he's a, he's a great guy. He, I got, I got a few stories with him, but he's, uh, he's funny. You know, we'll go drinking or whatever. He came, when he came to Detroit, he would come out to the house and stay with, with me and um, we'd get drinking and he's the same with no beers or 12 beers. Like he's the exact yeah. same guy, just nice, calm, cool and collective. Like you said, kind of straight emoji, but really good person down to earth like really enjoy hanging out with them and like i said we talk frequently but uh like i said it was cool to be able to go underneath and hang out with the guys and that was kind of the cherry on top that was uh you know we visited the president the next day um that was an experience to say the least it's an experience um but like i said to be able to uh um you know go to the caps game let loose with the guys just with the guys and then uh like i said go underneath and basically both teams have a you know world championship in their sport to enjoy one another is is surreal yeah we saw uh, from the media perspective we saw the conga line we saw you guys randomly singing we are champions together yeah. and <laughs> and we saw oshi doing his 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 chug yeah that's all we saw anything that else was, was that was yeah yeah there's there was more things involved but it's like i said it's all in good fun um like I said, they let media in after we did some of our stuff that we've done with them. And like I said, jeez, uh, like I said, I've, I don't know if I've laughed so hard in my life. It was like I said, just yeah. a good time and and uh, be able to hang out with them. And and uh, you know, not that that was the end. There, you know, your careers are never, you know, where you can be like, hey, that's all. You know, I'm good to go type on any career. But it was kind of a closing of a chapter, I think, for everybody. That was neat Absolutely. that they won one we you know again chased one and and you know succeeded as they did and then that night was like really cool that both of us can say that we've won one and, and uh, kind of like you could say you first. could say that that it's now this the is, district of champions I not love the it. district of losers you know what i mean <laughs> it, so yeah hey, take it awesome well uh adam thank you so much for your time uh and and telling your story from last year uh thank you for your support of our site and thank you for loving hockey in general and, and racing too and uh thank you. yeah uh, Hopefully this will be the first of many times we hang out and I, like uh, I hope you have a wonderful time with your family tonight and, and the national startup very, very soon again. I hear you. appreciate you guys having me on. Always enjoy uh, our conversation and, and uh, stay safe and I'll be in touch. And we'll get you that iRacing setup. We'll figure it out. Oh, all right. <laughs> all right. Thanks, man. All right, have a good night. Care. All right.